everyone and welcome back to another enlightening episode of Nitsana's podcast series. I'm Hitvisha, your host. And today we are diving into a topic that is often overshadowed but equally crucial. The fertility is unspoken side from the male's perspective. You know, we usually tend to focus heavily on female fertility, but it is time that we shine a light on male factors that contribute to the fertility journey. And to help us unpack this topic, we have the incredible Dr. Sharlu Kashyap with us. Dr. Kashyap is a highly esteemed fertility consultant, counselor and coach. She has not only conducted more than 600 fertility camps, but has also counseled over 25,000 individuals facing infertility challenges. Her expertise and compassionate approach have been a beacon of hope for many couples. So Dr. Shalu, welcome and thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Hedri. Thanks. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you for welcoming me. Thank you. So now let's dive right in, Doctor. So, you know, male infertility is often the unspoken side of fertility challenges. So how do you usually address the issue of unexplained male infertility? And what are the emerging strategies that have been used to manage these causes? Yeah, cases? Yeah. So, Hedri, yes, this is very unspoken topic that the male infertility is increasing day by day and it is causing almost 10 to 20 percent of infertility in couples. But uh, uh, what do I understand that people don't talk about it? So what we offer that we uh, we communicate with them in that way that they have they should understand that male infertility also is a very very big and very big uh, uh, very big thing to understand that infertility can cause by male factor also and people don't don't want to talk about it and they feel shame to uh, to speak uh, speak up and uh, in public also doctor also and they don't discuss with the with within the couples also like if a person is having a male infertility or if a person like symptom wise a person know that that this is my problem that i am not able to do this thing or this thing whichever is this but what our uh, thing is that we communicate well to them we uh, we understand that there are problems that uh, and we take all the history details we take all the family history we take all the uh, things that uh, if they are, they have any addiction or they have um, they have any medical history or they have any genetic history and if they are having any problem in their day to day life like uh, lifestyle also so communication is the key that they have to understand that male factor infertility is also to be discussed yeah yeah that's actually very true that you said that sometimes it is a stigma in our society that we yes. cannot speak about yes that. they they feel like that this is not uh, our problem like they uh, the infertility can cannot caused by male factor their their thinking is like that so they think that infertility is only for the female yeah it is causing by the female only but they don't understand that the how will a uh, how will a uh, a female will make a baby with the sperm only na so sperm is the first thing that we have to uh, we have to uh, regulate we have to see what is the sperm spermatogenesis count and semen analysis and all we have to see those factors and for that we need to change our thinking that it is it is to be discussed and it they can talk about it to any doctor I personally feel that जो भी हमें पेशेंट को हम हमारे पास जो भी आता है हम उनको अच्छे से प्यार से समझाएं कि ये चीज इस वजह से है और अगर आपको ऐसी कोई प्रॉब्लम हो रही है या कुछ भी है आप एटलीस्ट अपना टेस्ट तो कराओ दे डोंट वॉन्ट टू टेस्ट दैम ऑल्सो तो दे थिंक ये नहीं नहीं मैं तो ठीक हूँ मैं तो ठीक हूँ मुझे तो कोई दिक्कत नहीं है चाहे दिक्कत हो बट वो बताना नहीं चाहते हैं वो समझते हैं कि हमारी वाइफ को ट्रीट करो भाई ये ही है इनको ही ट्रीट करो मैं तो बिल्कुल ठीक हूँ so that thinking is very uh, like needs to be changed so definitely yeah 
now even speaking of evaluations that you mentioned so when a patient comes to you how do you approach the clinical evaluation of male infertility yeah so when we do the semen analysis first of all we have to make them understand that the we need to go for the semen analysis also because if the female factors are all uh, are all good in good parameters but we need to check the semen analysis first we need to uh, like it will take 2 3 visits to make them understand that semen analysis is also very uh, very crucial thing to do so when we do the semen analysis they give us a sample and the embryologist or uh, uh, junior embryologist whatever available whoever available uh, will do the semen analysis and we uh, we check the parameters like uh, uh, the sperm count the motility and the morphology or if there any infection yeah so sperm count may jo uh, concentration hona chahiye that that should be the count should be more than 15 million per ml like in 1 ml of semen there should be 15 million per ml count of sperm and the motility should be more than 40% anything more than 40% is good if it is less than 40% then we we can treat them to make uh, the count higher but more than 50% is very good and the morphology should be more than 4% more, more than 4% sperm count should be in good morphology otherwise there will be changes in um, in the sperm count or the the, the uh, if the morphology like the normal form of a sperm is not good then there can be uh, changes in embryo formation also and there there cannot be any uh, there should not be any infection like any wbcs or uh, on any cells or any pus cells or any blood count there should be not there so this is the sperm parameter that we need to see before going for any treatment that actually makes a lot of sense now and uh, just if out of curiosity how like on a pay, on a daily basis uh, how uh, common is it like the number is not essential the semen Sorry? analysis the semen analysis number the mm-hmm. that you mentioned that it should be about 15000 it is not uh, up to the point so on a daily basis how common is it it is very common like uh, in 80 to 90% it is less than 15 million uh, per ml only and in 10 to 20% cases it is normal but uh, uh, in 70 80% cases it is below than the normal levels thank you for highlighting yeah. that <laughs> and yeah. it is very difficult to make them understand that this is because of male factor it's not the female factor because hota kya hai ki ek couple hai wo 5 saal se koshish kar raha hai normally try kar raha hai and uh, they are like ki unko physically or normally uh, like symptom wise koi problem nahi hoti hai but they don't know about the sperm count what is the sperm count of them because unhone kabhi test nahi karaya and because 5 uh, years se wo try kar rahe hain aur uh, wo pregnancy nahi ho rahi hai ek baar bhi pregnancy agar nahi hui hai aur wo in the end jaakar 5 saal ke baad agar test karate hain to wo sabse pehle female ka test karate hain they don't go for the male factor एंड उसके बाद पता चलता है कि फीमेल का तो सारा चीजें नॉर्मल है और जो मेल फैक्टर है उसका काउंट ही फिफ्टीन मिलियन या फिर बहुत ही कम है फिफ्टीन मिलियन से भी बहुत कम है now you know hormonal assessments are another aspect of this evaluation so how do they play into the diagnosis of uh, male infertility and how do they complement other diagnostic tools yeah so uh, i will explain with a uh, example of case so uh, what happens is one once a patient is coming and there we have uh, done their semen analysis and all the counts and we uh, we know that there the total count is uh, less than 15 million or less than 10 million or uh, whatever it is but it is very poor so we go for the tests only that the hormonal tests like testosterone fsh lh or uh, prolactin and all so uh, if the hormone level is below the normal level or higher than the normal level then we got to know that uh, this is the reason that the uh, because of their their hormonal count that's why they are having this count of semen or this count of sperm yeah 
so like testosterone testosterone it make uh, make the spermatogenesis it enhances the spermatogenesis like fsh is fsh is follicular stimulating hormone that it stimulate the sperm production and maturation like lh luteinizing hormone it it is uh, uh, it causes this production and spermatogenesis and the development of the sperm and the growth of the sperm and the morphology and the prolactin level should be lower so if the prolactin is high then then we got to know that uh, the the prolactin is higher that that's why they have the lower testosterone which with uh, which will decrease the level of testosterone so these all hormones are very crucial for the uh, to identify that the, the if the semen count or sperm count is not good yeah that makes a lot of sense now mm-hmm. uh, so now there's been a lot of buzz around the role of antioxidants in sub, um, antioxidants and supplements in managing oxidative stress and improving the sperm quality so what mm-hmm. are your thoughts on this okay so antioxidants are very good for our body even for the female also because with the antioxidants we can increase our hormonal level which we want to increase because in female the female hormone will increase with the antioxidants and in male the uh, male hormone will increase with the antioxidants and we can gain from our day to day life like from our kitchen like we have we can have dry fruits and we can have uh, uh, green veggies we can have uh, uh, like pulses lentils we can have all these things and most of all we can do all the things but most of all we forget to drink enough water yeah so this is very important with the antioxidants this this is our day to day life we can have from the kitchen and the uh, also supplements are also there um, in the market so we can take them according to the doctor's advice so antioxidants on all the supplements like uh, coenzyme q10 is a very good uh, thing to take because all the doctors uh, prescribe q coenzyme q10 and uh, different types of antioxidants and glutathione selenium there are many there are many and but these are beneficial for our um, sperm count and for our follicle count as well as yes, so overall diet changes also makes certain yes, so yes. lifestyle and diet is very good for our our hormones so hom- yes. because of the hormones we will make good sperm count definitely yes yeah. Uh, so now, doctor, if you can tell us that how can healthcare professionals better educate patients about addressing this stigmatic uh, male infertility and its potential impact on overall fertility? Yeah. So, uh, like uh, healthcare professionals, main thing is to communicate so well, to elaborate everything so well that they, the patient, should understand that this is our problem. this is our uh, disease and this is the treatment plan that we have to go okay so well communication is the main important thing and the the, the true guidance that uh, the patient if uh, if patient is having some uh, like if a patient is having a low sperm count that what treatment plan is good for them and what the what the diet and yoga and a uh, stress release thing will make their sperm count good so that they can get pregnant naturally so and uh, the uh, uh, we communicate them about the yoga exercise and meditation we do all the things to make them understand that these all are the important things to do yeah so the communication is the key point of elaborating everything yes right that communication is key to very yes much. and this is happening because i have seen so many patients that uh, uh, they don't get satisfied with the healthcare professionals or uh, um, the doctor they are visiting they don't that, that that satisfaction or they don't understand that what is the problem and sometimes they, um, they don't get the uh, that doctor's time that doctor can elaborate them so easily or um, everything so and first of all it is to be understand that unko jo cheez samajhni hai ya jo cheez unko unki problem hai wo cheez samajhne ke liye unki thinking change karna bahut zyada zaruri hai so my point and my aim is that that we make the people understand that what is the what is the basic things 
what are what are the basic things that we need to understand that first of all is that if if a couple is not getting pregnant then they should go for the both of the test like female and male also so this is the thing and the these uh, these are all things that we do for the baby. yes and the right communication is also important what to actually yeah. communicate yeah. and tell yeah. your healthcare professional yeah. So now uh, before we wrap up uh, one last question would be could you tell us what are some of the most surprising or unfact- unexpected factors according to you that have encountered the um, effect on male infertility Yeah so first of all I would like I would like to say that the smoking really kills the sperm count and the people who are not understanding that the smoke it doesn't uh, doesn't uh, have to do with this sperm count then they are really making a big mistake smoking really affects the sperm count very badly so smoking uh, whoever couple wants to get pregnant they should uh, they should evict or they should quit the uh, smoke and then uh, if they are taking any steroids any medications that have uh, steroid in their uh, uh, their medicines so they should avoid the steroid medicines also and then stress if they are having uh, lots of stress it is because of family matters or they because of their occupation or whatever is this stress is a very big thing that uh, that affects our hormones male and female both yeah. so stress is the very big thing and of course the diet whatever we are eating we are we are making our body uh, that only so uh, diet we should plan accordingly yes thank you and if they idea. are having any problem any any uh, like if if a couple is uh, trying for so many times like uh, for one year or 1.5 year or if the preg- if the uh, patient is getting married delayed like after 30 mm-hmm. so uh, if they are trying for 6 months they should go for go to doctor to check them that everything is okay if they are trying normally or if, if anything is uh, problematic or anything is happening with them that uh, they are not able to do any particular thing so they need to go to the doctor to check themselves yes those are some important factors that one yeah. should consider so one one thing is there um, Mm-hmm. yeah please conception consultation is the main thing that the couple is in uh, in their 30s and they want to get pregnant and they are trying naturally so there is pre conception consultation is necessary for them so if they are uh, like uh, if they are uh, trying naturally that they, they can go to doctor they can test themselves and they can get uh, they can know that uh, this is a problem we need to check it and we need to uh, we need to do it uh, we need to cure it or we need to do it uh, yeah uh, so this is the main important thing yes yeah. that is something very important as well mm. now as we wrap this session i would like to thank dr kashyap for sharing your thoughtful and comprehensive responses and let me tell you that your expertise and compassionate approach are truly commendable and inspiring so thank you doctor Thank you Hitvi I am really grateful to be here and I hope that uh, my experience have uh, uh, like is useful for you and the people also that they got to know the many things that they don't understand so um, thank you so much Yes it definitely was doctor and to our listeners thank you for tuning in today And remember if you are a healthcare professional who is eager to dive deeper into medical topics or have questions do not hesitate to join us on MedSynapse platform. MedSynapse platform is not just a resource it's a dynamic space where you can connect with your medical peers participate in meaningful discussions and contribute to the ongoing evolution of healthcare. So until next time take care of yourself and stay tuned for more engaging discussions.